Hey, what's up guys? It's Luke, and thanks for watching Luke the Gathering, my magic channel here on YouTube. And guess what? Yesterday was the last Strixhaven draft for sort of the store's standard booster draft format. Next week will be the pre-release on Friday night for the new Dungeons & Dragons set. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I think it's going to be fun. It's a really different set. I've tried it out on Arena, and uh, yeah, the cards play very differently than Strixhaven. A lot of new mechanics, and a lot of dice rolling, and uh, yeah, lots to learn. And so it's, I'm actually going to really miss Strixhaven, because as you know, if you've been following my channel a little bit, you know that Strixhaven was the very first set that I got into Magic. And so it's always going to hold like a special place in my heart, which, um, which it, it does. And I love the cards, and I like a lot of the cards even though it's a it's a good um underpowered set is what people say so and that's okay it's still a really fun set to play and i love the school theme of strixhaven what a cool concept anyways about last night's draft so i ended up getting into green and blue which is a little bit different than what i did the last week which was green and black but i still sort of kept the same ideas kind of flowing through for green and blue that I did last week. Game number one went very well. I went 2-0 and for the match, and um, the second game ended in like three turns, four turns, because they couldn't keep up with my big monsters, my big creatures. I had these giant monsters out there, and they just completely wiped the floor really, 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 really quickly. The guy couldn't believe it. And then in the first game, again, just big creatures, got a win, but that game took quite a bit longer, and I was feeling good. I was like, yes, I am going to totally go 3-0. and oh. uh, My deck is rolling. It's great. And then I had to face a Silver Quill player who was very experienced, and they had a clever Luminancer that they got out first turn both times, and they just kept pumping the Luminancer before I could get any significant creatures out. And I was just wiped out. Just as fast as I had won, I was one and one, <laughs> sitting at 500. And I was like, oh, what a bummer. I think, like, his Silver Quill deck, which is white and black, just was able to go so fast. And getting the Luminancer on the first turn, I mean, they're like, planes, Luminancer, planes, Luminancer. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want to see the Luminancer. Because that buffs really, really easily. And then this guy is really smart in his draft. So he's drafting a lot of instants. Um, you know, like a Sudden Breakthrough was one that he was stalking a lot of. And then um, there's a one white... Um, what is it called? Guiding Light. I'm not sure what it is, but it's the one where it gives like a plus one, plus one to the creature. And that's going to automatically buff. It's a sorcery. And so the Luminancer kicked my butt. Um, I've heard the Luminancer is not a great card. If you're playing Draft, well, if you know what you're doing, it's a great card. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, and then in the final matchup, I actually played against a very similar deck instead of blue um, and, and green like I had. This was a, a green and black deck, and again, it was just outpacing me. They threw down like a bunch of... Um, uh, little creatures that they buffed similar to what the second matchup i had did and even though these games were closer the result was the same i went home one and two so i'm not completely disappointed but you know i wish i did a little bit better than i did especially with the really nice start that i got to this particular tournament uh, i'm going to take a look at some of the cards that we drafted We'll talk about them, see if they even came up, because I feel like some of these didn't do a whole lot, and maybe they would have made a difference. So let's check them out right now. Okay, so check this card out. It's the Augmenter Pugilist, and it was actually the very first card I drafted. You know, I really feel like, and I've, probably a lot of people do this, but you know, the first card that you draft is probably going to be one of the colors you're going to be playing. And look at it. It's green and blue on the back. I didn't even look at the back. Echoing equation. Would this make a difference? Choose target creature you control. Each other creature you control becomes a copy of it till the end of turn. That's actually pretty cool. I don't know. Would this have made a difference? I don't think it would have made a difference, actually. 
Um, I only got the pugilist out in one of the uh, one of the games. Uh, didn't do a whole lot. Three three, and would have got plus five plus five with eight or more lands out. So I was trying to get lands out. This guy would have been an eight eight with trample. That would have been sick. But like I said, the games that I lost didn't last that long, and the games that I won did. But I had other ways to win as well. So there's that. Zimone. Zimone, also great. This is somebody who would have helped me put my lands down, right? So for one and tapping her, I can put an extra land down onto the battlefield. Tapped. This this card also helps me draw cards. For four, a little bit expensive, but sort of more late game. She kind of has a lot more value later on in the game. She's pretty weak at 1 and 2, and she's going to be tapped a lot, but I was hoping she would be a better resource for me than she was. I think she did okay, but she would come out sort of mid-game is kind of when I drew her out, and uh, I wish I could have used her more, but she doesn't really punish the opposition. She's sort of a, a helper to you, so uh, it's nice to get help, but I don't know. I, I tend to like to punish the opposition with the cards I have rather than get help like drawing cards drawing cards is great but at the same time i don't know we need to do some damage right the burrog befuddler uh this guy came into play a couple times just a 2-1 nothing crazy kelpie guide i got the foil now kelpie guide is a pretty good card because it helps you untap permanents like lands that you might have and if you have eight or more lands you can actually tap um any any uh permanent including your your opponents but getting up to eight lands is kind of difficult and so kelpie guide didn't do a whole lot this tournament i drafted kelpie guide hoping that they would do more but he ended up just being sort of a blocker um, not the best campus guide this is one of the ways to get land out of my deck and so i think campus guide's always great they have the pilgrim in white that lets you get planes this one lets you get any kind of land, and so, you know, he gets the land, and he kind of blocks and dies. Kind of his job. And for that, you know, he served the purpose. Frost Trickster, great card. A flying bird wizard. Um, this, this saved me a bunch of times where I could, you know, tap an opponent right when this guy gets into the, field, uh, the battlefield, and then he's flying, and he's doing damage. So... Uh, Trickster did a nice job for me. Zephyr Boots didn't do a whole lot. Um, well, actually, I take that back. In the games that I won, I did equip the Zephyr Boots so that some of my creatures, some of my bigger creatures, had flying. And this is what I really like about Zephyr Boots. They fly, and they can't get blocked if they don't have flyers. So flyers are great in limited format, so Zephyr Boots just makes some of the bigger creatures who don't have flying that much more difficult to deal with plus it has like a card drawing mechanic that i don't really like actually it says whenever you draw uh do combat damage you draw a card and then discard a card so if you have no cards in hand you draw that card and you basically discard it and then if you only have one card in hand you have to pick between the two sometimes you want both of them sometimes you don't want to discard anything and uh you have to because it's a must do action charge through i didn't draw this card at all but it's funny in the draft because um some of my big creatures i want to be able to trample through that's sort of one of my win conditions and in the draft i was saying i really need a charge through and guess what got passed to me in the next pack charge through and then i never saw it in my hand throughout the entire tournament last night oh that that sucked because this would have been a great help to me Arcane Subtraction, kind of a nice card. Um, target creature gets minus four, minus zero, and it helps you to learn. So this is sort of those, you know, this since my deck's not fast, I'm, I am trying to survive, and this kind of helps you do that just a little bit, and you can learn. So there's that added benefit. I only had one card in my sideboard to learn because this was my only learn card, so I didn't want to really put too much in the sideboard. Biblioplex Assistant. Really cool card. Flyer, it's kind of expensive for four, but this helps me get back, you know, instants or sorceries that might be useful, and I did, so he definitely paid off. 
by you, Groff. Uh, just a bigger body, 5-4. Didn't do a whole lot for me uh, that game. Opt, scry, draw a card. Uh, it's cheap, lets you look into the deck, gets you a card. I think it's it's a nice little addition. I put this in starting on game two. I took out, uh, I think, a spring main for that. But just kind of a utility. Quandrix, Pledge, Pledge Mage. You know, I play against these a lot on Arena. And um, they do well. But this deck's not a deck that really has a bunch of sorceries and enchantments. and Or sorcerers instants, I should say. So he didn't really get a whole bunch of plus ones, plus ones. He ended up just being a little blocker if he came out. Which kind of is a waste, obviously. Big play. Didn't get to use big play either. Sad about that. Reckless, Amplomancer. This guy is cool because you can double his um, power and toughness. And if you have like 10 mana open for whatever reason, you can actually double it twice. He becomes an 8-8, which is really sweet. Or if he has counters on him, then even more. So that's he's in the deck. He's He only costs two to come out. I see this guy not getting drafted a lot. I feel like he should be drafted more because he's actually pretty useful. Ah, here it is. Exponential Growth. Um... This card came my way. I got this card last week. I talked about it last week as well. And um, this card won me the game again in, in one of the rounds. Just buffed um, a fractal creature really, really big. And then I think it was flying. I think that's what was well, that had the Zephyr boots. And uh, yeah, won the game right away. Really cool card. You can see it coming a mile away, though, because it's a sorcery. And that's, a, that's the only kind of downside about it. It's not an instant. If it was an instant, oh my gosh. It would be nuts. Uh, Eureka Moment. This is a great card. This actually worked really well for me. It lets me draw cards. Put a land for my hand onto the battlefield. Really nice. Really, really nice card. It does cost four. So it is a little bit pricey. Um, you see Zimone there on the card. So, you know, she's the card drawer card drawing engine didn't draw a lot of cards um in the games especially the ones that i lost unfortunately i wish i could have drawn some more i had uh two mage duels and that was really sweet because mage duel kind of helps buff up your guy and gets rid of your opponents guys these came in handy this was sort of my creature removal in the deck and it did come in handy a couple times i'm glad i had two of them and then let's uh, we'll talk about these two these two are similar cards. They create giant creatures like um, Leyline is this one over here. You know, that's going to make you a 6-6 six, six at the least. And then Fractal depends on, you know, how much mana you have. But this was what I was hoping for. And then Master Symmetrist comes in and he gives him Trample. And he's a 4-4 four, four with Reach. So... That was kind of a win condition for me as well, having those. And if you could expen exponential growth something, then it just made it all the more hideous to have to deal with. Again, playing a deck that's like sort of a medium deck, medium tempo deck to, a, you know, a deck that kind of takes more time, I feel like it helps me to set up. But if I'm playing against a deck that is just going fast, just moving, 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 then uh, I, I'm probably going to lose just because... They're just going to be whittling me down, whereas if I don't have the cards to help me survive, I'm not going to last very long. And so I, that's just how the tournament went. So that was it. That that was the tournament for me. Um, we'll just check out the sideboard. We had the De Demogoth Woe Eater. I didn't obviously didn't play it, but I grabbed it because I didn't want anybody else to have it. This was my one lesson, Introduction to Annihilation. And um, I could have put the Fractal Summoning in, but I main decked it because um, just in case I couldn't get that card, I wanted it in the main deck to be able to draw it out rather than have to rely on getting the one card that helped me learn. And so this was in there. I never got to learn, actually. So it, I think maybe once, but I never used Introduction to Annihilation. And so just here are some of the other cards I got. Heavy green and blue. Emphasis. Another Eureka moment there. Symmetry Sage. Foil. This is sort of like, um, kind of like um, Clever Luminancer, sort of, but like not nearly as good by a long shot. And so, yeah, there we go. 
so I, you know some of these red wasn't being drafted much so um People were actually putting Boros down quite a bit. Like, Boros, it sucks, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, I didn't see a lot of red. People just probably ended up getting a lot of red left over. But there it is. That was the draft. And uh, I had fun. And next week we're going to do D&D pre-release. Uh, looking forward to that. going to see how that goes. Thanks for watching this. And uh, I'll see you next time.